Blog Talk Radio. Hello, Walt. Compliment of the season, everyone. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. Remember, Christ is the reason for the season. And let's always remember to thank him for coming into this sinful world, even though he was a perfect Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Today, I want to talk about 2014 and taking inventory of the entire year of 2014. I know when we started the year, a lot of us had New Year resolution and the things that we planned to do. Lots of us set goals of what we desired to accomplish this year. How many of your plans did you accomplish this year? I believe a goal without strategy is a plan. It's just a a, a plan or it's just like you're wishing for something if you don't have strategies in place. What were the things that kept you from doing those things you had in your New Year resolution or you had written out the beginning of the year? For me, I could say it's it was the fear of fear of the unknown. What if I do it and people don't accept me? What if I release the product and it doesn't sell? What if my target audience doesn't realize they are in fact my target audience? What if I get criticized, which we get a lot? What if my my accent or my lack of education get in the way? What if, what if, what if is the enemy of progress? These are all the questions we ask ourselves, and it hinders us from being at the place God has assigned for us. We fear even before the incident or cause. How will you then trust in God or exercise your faith if you don't do your part by making a move first, making a move towards your goals? or your aspirations, or even making a move towards, you know, fulfilling that talent or the gifts that you do have. Don't always expect people, don't expect your first move to hit gold or you become famous at your first move. Rather, make your first move because you believe God will show up and lines will begin to fall for you in pleasant places. Just total dependence on God. Now, I know this may be challenging, even for me, that I'm preaching to a choir and I'm speaking to myself as well. Not that I'm a pastor or a minister or anything of that sort, but, um, you know, I I believe this platform is for us to encourage each other and kind of just have a conversation in terms of, you know, what we can do right, what we can do next time even better, um, how to accomplish our goals or how to bring out those gifts and talents and aspirations that we don't even know they exist. So having total dependence on God, like I was saying, it's, it's, um, it, it could be challenging, you know, even in the midst of thing and the world we're living right now. You turn on the TV, you're hearing a thing, you, you look at the, um, the news online and you're seeing something different, and there's just so much going on. But if you have all the know-how, why will you need to, why will you need God? Or why are you still afraid, really? So no one really knows the know-how to everything. You have a goal, you have a talent, but really you don't know how to go after those grow goals. Or you may not have all the full picture, but, you know, relying totally on God and having total dependence on him is trying to make a move on the faith, on your faith, stepping out in faith, and going after at least what you know for sure at that moment, and then allowing God to just do what he wants to do from then on out. Um, I believe after you've prayed about it and you've felt peace about it, just do it and let it go. Sometimes God reveals direction through his words, or it could be a spoken word to you from someone else. And interestingly, you're still afraid to move, even though somebody actually walked up to you or someone who had a dream or even a prophet can come to you and say, you know what, I feel this thing, or I saw this thing, or the Lord revealed this to me, or when I was reading the scripture on my Bible study, this came to my mind for you, 
And these are the words that I want to speak into your life. And sometimes we're still afraid, you know, to, to, to make that move or to go after whatever, you know, they're, they're telling us about or speaking to us about to encourage us. Sometimes we're still reluctant, even though we got a confirmation from someone or through the word. One confirmation from God is all I believe we need to do exploit. Just one is enough because we're exercising our faith in him. But could could it have been that God was waiting on you to make a move? And then in return, he backs you up and send a ladder or even ladders pull your way. I believe, I, I you know, actually, I want to tell you the story. I remember when we were growing up and I remember us pr- playing um, video games and my brother and our friends would play. And I remember the game would not start until or it will not start until we make some kind of activity on the play pad. The game will not start, or even the door to the next level will not open until our characters in the game starts to move, at least make some kind of activity on the play pad. I, I see life like that. And don't, I don't believe God will send someone from heaven to give specific directions, but he has given us the ability to do or choose our will. And I pray your will will be wrapped around God's will and that we will operate in the center of God's will. I don't believe you were given your gifts for the fun of it, but I believe it is to be used for its glory. God has a need for you. So let me ask you, what if I had done what I wanted to do this year? What if I had done everything on my uh, on my New Year resolution list, and it actually worked out as expected, will you be in a better place right now? Mm. I won't be able to find out because I never made a move, right? I wouldn't be able to, I can't tell. I won't be able to know the answer to that because I never did make a move. So what are some emails or some phone calls that you were supposed to make this year and you just didn't because you were afraid. Do you know the things that ended you this year from giving birth to that greatness in you? Could it be procrastination? Could it be fear? Or like I've been saying, or whatever it may be for you, going into the new year or the next year, you have to be aggressive. And these are the things I'm speaking to myself as well. I will be aggressive. If you believe in the gifts and the talent God that God has given to you, you have to use them to the best of your ability. I pray we will all see the new year, the next year, in good health, in perfect and sane mind, and, I, and start the new year with great expectation and to see ourselves doing much more and being the best version of ourselves. You are more than what you're letting on. I'm saying to myself, I'm much more than what I'm letting on. I believe you were strategically packaged by God. You are no doubt destined for greatness. You have something unique to offer this world, something that did not exist until you arrived. And this world is still waiting on you to deliver. I believe this world is still waiting on me to deliver. And I just pray that this words will encourage someone today. And I just want to say, don't wait for people to support your vision right away or initially. Don't be disappointed if they don't. Keep pressing on and pray that God will surround you with the right people. I believe when he calls you, he blesses you with people that would help bring your vision or your ministry to life. I believe dying and thing empty. Dying empty is the key. Exhausting all you have been given to impact this world. Pray for clarity of vision. You know, God is not, a, the Lord is not an awful confusion. That's what the Bible says. You may think your gift is too small or you are questioning if it will actually help or bless someone. Advertise at first to the world and wait to see how God will use it for his glory. By the grace of God, 
We have amazing shows lined up for next year by the grace of God. Until next time, keep dreaming, stay focused, and remember, everyone was born unique with specific gifts and talents. And you know what's real and what's funny is that the world is waiting for you to unleash them for the glory of God. You have a target audience. You have people that are waiting to hear from you. You have gifts that people, people are really seriously in need of right now. You're the only one that can offer it to them. A few weeks ago, ago one of my friends was talking about DNA or your fingerprint. And it was, she was saying, you know, holding things really hot can erase your fingerprint. And I thought about it in such a, that was profound to me. And I felt that every single person have a unique fingerprint. And you have a unique fingerprint. And I feel your gifts and talents are like that as well. The world is waiting for you. The world is waiting for me to, to birth those things that we have on the inside of us, to make an impact, to change this world for the better, to be ambassadors for Christ, to live for Christ, to stand for Christ. Even at this end time, the Lord needs all of us. And by the grace of God, I pray God would just open your eyes to see those gifts that are in, in you, those gifts that you don't even know, have an idea, or have a clue that exists in you. I want to say stay focused. And remember, like I said, everyone is just born very, very unique. The world is waiting for you to unleash them, unleash your gifts, and unleash your talents for his glory. Always put God first. I'm your host, Joyce Sajanako.